Long ago, in Nepal, there was a girl named Punku Maicha. As Punku's mother died when she was young, Punku's father remarried. After that, Punku did live with her stepmother. She had a stepsister named Champa. The stepmother only loved her own daughter Champa. Delicious food was given only to Champa. Punku, on the other hand, used to eat only leftover and stale food. Punku had to do all the work. Punku used to go to distant hills every day to graze the goats. Punku also had an old goat named Donzalecha. One day, while grazing goats, Punku got hungry. While Punku was sitting in despair, Donzalecha approached Punku and said, Are you hungry? Here, eat this. Donzalecha took out the sweet fruit from the grass he had eaten. After that, every day, Donzalecha started giving Punku the same sweet food. One day, while grazing goats, Champa stopped by, saying Punku eating something. Champa asked Punku, Hey, what are you eating? Where did you get it from? Give it to me. If not, I'll tell my mother. Punku told her sister Champa everything, and she also told her not to tell anyone else about it. But when Champa reached home, she told his mother everything. When the stepmother found out about Donzaleza, she could not tolerate the goat as the goat was giving the sweet food only to Punku. She decided that she would cut and eat the goat the next day. Donzaleza was listening to everything they said. The next morning, the goat went to Punku and said, I will be killed today. Punku started to cry after she heard Donzaleza's words. You are the only one who loves me. Without you, what would I do alone? Donzaleza said to Punku, Listen carefully to what I have to say. After killing me, everyone will eat my flesh, but you should not eat it. Instead, take my bones and bury them somewhere. That night, many friends of the stepmother also gathered at Punku's house. Everyone enjoyed sweet feast with the meat of Donzaleza. However, Punku did not eat anything that night. Instead, she told that she had a stomach ache and went to sleep inside her room. After everyone's meal, Punku was asked to wash the dishes and clean everything. After cleaning everything, she collected the bones of Donzaleza and took them to a place far away and buried them. The next day, while going to graze the goats, Punku saw a big tree had grown in the place where the bones of Tonsaleta had been buried. There were many yamari sweetbreads growing on the tree. Punku climbed the tree, picked up the yamaris, and began to eat. At the same time, Two monsters came near the tree and started shouting, Hey, you small girl, give us Yamari too. Punku threw one Yamari from the top of the tree. Yamari fell into the mud. The demons shouted again. After that, Punku started to collect lots of Yamari and as soon as she came down from the tree, the monsters grabbed her and carried Punku to their house in a cave across the hill. At monster's house, Punku was told to make bread and soup and the monsters went out. While Punku was making bread, a small mouse came and told Punku, If you give me a loaf of bread, I will tell you something. Punku gave a loaf of bread to the mouse. The mouse took the bread and went inside the hole. The mouse came out again and asked for another loaf of bread. Punku gave the mouse another loaf of bread. Again, the mouse started asking for bread one after another. After getting six to seven loaves, the mouse finally told Punku, Punku, you are a very good girl. If you stay here, the monster will eat you. You should run fast. Also, before you go, 
There are many diamonds and jewels in that corner room. Take them with you. And listen, spit once when you come out and put a circle on top of that spit. It will definitely do better. As the mouse said, there was a lot of property in the corner room. Punku took as many diamonds and jewels as she could carry. And as the mouse had said, she put a circle on top of the spit at the exit place and ran away from there. In the evening, the monsters returned. Punku Maita, open the door! From inside, there was an answer saying, Okay, okay. The monsters waited, but the door did not open. After a while, they shouted again, Punku Maita! The answer came from inside, but the door did not open. After waiting for a long time, the door was not opened. So the monster broke the door they saw on the spit. There was no Punku Maja. The demons found out that Punku had run away and desired to eat Punku remain unfulfilled. Punku had fled from there and reached her home. When she reached home, she knocked the door but no one answered. Can someone open the door? It's too much to lift. Having heard that, the stepmother finally opened the door wondering what might she had brought. Punku showed all the diamonds and jewels she had brought. Everyone was amazed. After that, the stepmother asked her daughter Champa to do the same thing. The next day, like Punku, Champa sat on the big Yamare tree. As before, the two monsters came near the tree and started shouting. Hey little girl, give us Yamari too. Champa threw one Yamari from the top of the tree. Yamari fell into the mud. The demon shouted again. As soon as Champa came down from the tree to pick up Yamari and give it to the monsters, the monsters carried Champa to their house in a cave across the hill. They kept Champa at home to make bread and soup, and the monsters went out. While Champa was making bread, a small mouse came and told Champa, If you give me a loaf of bread, I will tell you something. Champa didn't like the mouse screaming and hit the mouse with the big spoon. After this, the mouse went into hiding and did not come out again. After not being able to hear the mouse words, Champa did not know how to escape from there. In the evening, the monsters returned and ate a lot of bread cooked by Champa. Even while sleeping in the evening, Champa was made to sleep between two monsters. While Champa was sleeping, the two monsters ate Champa as well. The stepmother, on the other hand, had been waiting happily since morning, thinking that her daughter Champa will also bring a lot of diamonds and jewels the next day. But Champa did not return. While combing her hair in the morning, a crow came from a balcony and started shouting, Ka ka! The daughter is dead. Tell the mother is busy being beautiful. The stepmother was very saddened by this message from the crow. She waited for many days for her daughter to come. But her daughter Champa never returned. This is Arzu Takaya Nagiraz Pandari saying this story. Please like and subscribe in Phil's picture. Thank you. Bye-bye.